Okay, now I'm going to make some more uh, comparisons. I'm going to make a few more friends. Okay, so I've made two more people. I've got one called Good Friend. His name is George Mueller. And then I have another one called My Clone. And My Clone has the exact same name as me before. So now I'm going to do some testing to see if these people are identical. Okay, I've cre created a little bit more code here. I'm going to compare two people. Now, I would assume that these people are not identical. So I'm comparing myself to good friend. All right, so these results should not be too surprising. I compared to say, if me equals good friend, then it says here in the results, the two people are not equal. However, if I were to compare two others, if I were to compare me and my clone, what kind of results do you expect? Give me a equal or not equal prediction. Ready? Place your bets. It says these people are not identical. So why aren't they identical? Well, when we're doing a comparison here, obviously we're not just comparing the value of their properties because the strings are identical. Shad Sluter and Shad Sluter are identical. What they're probably comparing in the background are the address locations. Are these actual objects that are identical? And the answer is no. However, as a programmer, we probably want to have a comparison so that we can check to see if two objects have the same values. And so we need to override a method that's in Java. So let's change this uh, equation here. I'm going to erase this part here and get back to just me. I'm going to put a dot after me. And you can see that in my suggestions of all the properties or all the methods that I can use with a, an object here, equals comes up as one of my choices. So I'll double click this. It says here, if you're going to compare two objects, let's compare an object with me. I'm going to put in my clone. Now, I'm comparing using an equals operator instead of a double equal sign. What do I get now? Do I get not identical or identical? You ready? Place your bets. Uh, once again, it says not identical. Let's do one more comparison that I think will come out as true. So I'm going to copy and paste this last line. And instead of saying me equals my clone, I'm just going to compare me with me. And this should come out to be true, I would hope anyway. And it sure says that these two people are identical. And so it recognizes that this and that object are exactly the same thing. So if I want to have the behavior in my program that says I'm going to compare two objects and compare their fields or their properties, then I need to override this method called equals. So let's go into person. So I'm going to create a new method with a Boolean return, and I'm going to call it equals. And I'm going to return false or something. Now equals has to have a comparison to compare to. So I'm going to use the generic object uh, title and then the word other. So we can put any kind of object into this equals and we'll compare to see if they're identical. All right, so now if I were to compare the object with itself, it will return true. So in the case down here at the bottom where it says I compared me to me, yes, they indeed are the same thing. So let's uh, do that case. So if I could say if this is equal to other, then return true. Okay, another choice is that the object that they sent to us to compare is null. That would be a return false, obviously. So we could also check to see if these two objects are actually the same type. So I'm going to use the keyword get class. If the class of this thing and the class of the other thing are not the same class, they cannot be equal. So the last case, we know now that the objects are of the same type. And if their properties or their fields all match, then let's return true. So you might be tempted just to say, let's compare the uh, first name with the uh, object itself. So let's try that. If, uh, then we'll say this.firstName equals other.firstName. And 
I don't see a first name. So why don't I see first name? Well, that's because when I passed in other, it was coming in as a generic object. And so it really doesn't tell me that I am guaranteed to have a field called first name. What I can do is create a, an intermediate object. So right here, I'm going to say person, and we're going to call him P equals, we're going to cast other as a person. Now this might fail. We might get a complete crash. The program will run uh, an error. It'll flag an exception because we're not guaranteed to get an object that is type person. So down here, instead of using the word other, I'm going to erase that and change it to P dot, and there it is, first name. So P is now a person. Now I want to compare both the first name and the last name. So I'm going to say if this dot last name equals P dot last name, then I've got myself a, uh, a return value of true. Or if it's not, then we'll return false. So instead of doing an if then statement, I can just say return. And we'll compare those two values. So now we have ourselves a true and false for every different case in the list. So let's save the changes, come back here. Now let's see, I had, uh, let's see, one, two, three different things. The second one is where we hope that the two people will be identical. So let's run the program. And now we have two identicals and two not, and one not identical. So this one here obviously is not identical, two different things. But me and my clone now have changed from being not identical to being identical. And the reason why that works is because we did the override of the equals function and we had to compare all the fields in it. So this is customized specifically to the person object. It won't work on any other object because no other objects have first names and last names, but it works great for this one here. So let's uh, review some of the assignment uh, requirements here. So part three, compare two person objects. So we've done this code here. We've created a method or created an object called person, and we've done some comparison testing with the equals signs, and then we're uh, overriding equals with this uh, this uh, new method here. Lastly, number four says let's override toString. So create some kind of a customized toString, and we're going to also tell it what class name came from this string. So that's a pretty simple example. Let's uh, just do that real quickly. So inside of toString, I'm going to return uh, this class is and then I'm going to put in this dot get class and then print the rest of it let's see what that does now so the first three guys here we'll see a third one is different it says this class is class assignment six okay so finally we're getting to the end here we're going to uh, run this test class take some screenshots of everything that you just made and I want to have you put you into your own words what you saw today. So three or four sentences briefly describing why the output works the way it does. And tell me how equals and two string have been changed and why do they behave differently than before we started programming. So what are we going to turn in then? So screenshots. And we want to see what has been done. And as always, I would like to have a zip file of your code. So take the folder here called Assignment 6, and let's go Show in your System Explorer. And here's Assignment 6, and we are going to create a zip file. So compress or create zip file and turn that thing in.